for Learning Target 4-5 on inscribed angles. Before we begin today, I want to look at a circle and see that we have here a central angle because this angle is at the center of the circle. Now, a central angle is congruent to its intercepted arc. So this arc measure, measure of the arc, we'll call it AB, is also 98 degrees. Now, what I would like you to think about is what if I took this and I pulled it back so that the center is now back here at C. What would be the measure of this angle here? So think about that. Do you think it's 98? The answer to that is, for example, if you were standing right here and you look at an opening AB, it's going to seem wider than if you move back. And you can see here that the distance is going to be twice the distance away from if you were on the circle. So this angle is actually going to be half of what the 98 is. So this is a 49 degree angle. That is what we call an inscribed angle. So the whole lesson today is dealing with now instead of having that central angle, we're going to pull it back so that our angle is on the circle. And it's called an inscribed angle. I think this is an excellent application to this idea where we've got player B which has an inscribed angle. It opens up to the goal here. We can look at player A and its angle. It's also an inscribed angle. And then we've also got player C down here. Now in each of these cases, the players are on a circle. And what we're noticing here is that each of the players end up having the exact same angle to the opening of the goal, which makes sense. The closer you are, the bigger the opening. And player C is obviously closer. A is further away, but has a more direct route to the opening. So each of these players has the same angle for the goal. I think that's interesting. They are all inscribed angles because the vertex of our angle is on the circle. So all three of those players, same inscribed angle measure because they open up to the same two points on the circle. Let's pause for a moment, add this to your handbook and press play when you are finished. So you've added inscribed angle, the intercepted arc. You can see here the intercepted arc. It, C is an inscribed angle because point C is on the circle. And we know that an inscribed angle is half the measure of its intercepted arc. So whatever the mark, the arc, the measure of the arc, that's why I call mark, whatever the measure of the arc AC is, angle B will be half of its measure. Now here's three different scenarios. And in all three cases, you can do a proof for this. They are all inscribed angles because the points are on a circle. We're not going to do the proof for this. We're just going to use the fact that the inscribed angle is half of its intercepted arc. So we're going to skip that proof. Let's go on to here. What are the values of A and B? So in this circle, A is this arc right here. That arc is opening up to I take P all the way back and point T all the way back, we see that the inscribed angle is 60. It's not a central angle, so A is not 60. It's going to be twice 60. So we get that A is going to be 120. So A is 120. Now B is down here, and B opens up to be this intercepted arc which is 120 plus this here is 30. So we get that this whole arc, and we take half th 
so 150, and we take half of that to get what angle B is. So to get B, we're going to take half of the 120 plus 30. So half of 150 to get 75 degrees. That is because an inscribed angle is always half of its intercepted arc measure. All right, let's see that in practice over here. Pause the movie, try 1A on your own, and then press play when you are finished. All right, looking at angle A, angle A opens up here. It opens up to a diameter. That tells you that this arc out here, this arc is 180. So if that's 180, we know that this angle has to be 90. So the measure of angle A is 90 degrees because it's half of its intercepted arc. Pause the movie, try B on your own, and press play when you are finished. Okay, so for each of these, we see that angle A opens up here to the arc 100 plus 90. So for angle A, we add 100 plus 90, divide by 2, and we get 95. To get angle B, B opens up to 64 plus 90, its intercepted arc. So we add 64 plus 90, and then we divide by 2 to get what its measure is. To get C, C opens up this way to this intercepted arc. 106 plus 64 divided by 2 gives you 85. D, D opens up to be this arc, 106 plus 100. So if we add 106 plus 100, we'll get that measure of D is 103. So each of these cases, they are all intercepted arcs. Notice it's a quadrilateral A, B, C, D. And so it makes sense that that quadrilateral being inscribed in the circle, all of these arcs should add up to 360. So just looking at this, let's answer C. What do you notice about the sums of the measures of the opposite angles in the quadrilateral? So what we're noticing here is that the opposite angles, angle A and angle C, as well as angle B and angle D. What do you notice about their sums? They are supplementary. They add up to 180. So opposite angles of an inscribed quadrilateral add up to be 180. Now that should make sense because they open up to opposite arcs. And if the whole circle's 360, they're going to be half, which is going to be 180. So this is a theorem that you'll need to know. And all both of those things we just looked at are these three corollaries, which are really important cor corollaries to deal with the inscribed angle theorem. This one says, corollary one, two inscribed angles that intercept the same arc will be congruent. You can see here that this angle opens up to the exact same arc that this one does. Therefore, those two angles are congruent. Corollary 2 says an angle inscribed in a semicircle is a right angle. We just saw that, which makes perfect sense. It opens up to 180, and if that's 180, then that has to be 90. And corollary 3 says the opposite angles of a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle are supplementary. A and C are supplementary. So the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle C equals 180. The measure of angle D plus the measure of angle B equals 180. Opposite angles are supplementary when you have a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle. Add those three to your handbook and then press play when you are finished. All right, let's look here. What is the measure of each numbered angle? Pause your movie, try A and B, and press play when you are finished. All right, let's look here. If this arc is 40, then this has to be 20, this angle. If this arc here is 70, 
then this has to be 35 because of this angle. So to get the measure of angle one, we don't even need to know that. Notice angle one opens up to a diameter. So that tells me that this is 180. So the measure of angle one has to be equal to 90 because it opens up to a semicircle. So it's not even needed, the 40 and the 70. Extraneous information. Let's look here at B. Okay, this arc right here is 70 degrees. We know that the 38 opens up to this arc as well as the two opening up to that arc. So let's highlight the two with the red. You can see that they both open up to the same arc. That arc has to be a measure of 76. I got that because 38 times two, because 38 is my inscribed angle. Well, if they both open up to the same arc and they're both inscribed angles, then the measure of angle two has to also be 38. Okay, let's try this one at the right. Pause the movie, try this on your own, and press play when you are finished. Okay, so we can see here we need to get the measure of angle one, the measure of angle two, the measure of angle three, and the measure of angle four. We see that the measure of angle one opens up to a diameter, so therefore, because this is 180, that's gonna be 100, because this one's 80. Then we know that the measure of angle one must be 90 degrees. You can see that three also opens up to a diameter. So angle three must also be 90 degrees, making this 180. So this must be 120 over here because the 60 and the 120 must equal the 180. So angle two is going to be opening up to this arc so we add those two together for angle two. We're gonna add 120 plus 100 and then divide it by two. So we get 220 divided by two, 110. Angle four opens up, angle four is here. It opens up to 60 plus 80. So 140 divided by two, we get 70. So there are, are angles. You can notice that opposite angles, one and three, are in fact supplementary, and two and four are in fact supplementary. This slide is just showing you that intercepted or inscribed angles like this one if I move that around the circle, that's another inscribed angle, keep moving it around to where that angle becomes one of the openings, this is also going to be an inscribed angle where all of those angles are gonna be congruent. So see how the look of this one is a little bit different because the opening, when you select two points on a circle, the opening is at that point. So it looks a little different, but it's also just a form of the same thing. It's an inscribed angle. So the measure of an angle formed by a tangent and a chord is half the measure of the intercepted arc. This is not a huge theorem to know, but it is something we're gonna to add to the handbook and we'll practice a little bit with. So pause the movie, add that to your handbook, press play when you are finished. All right, let's just do one problem with this. In the diagram, SR is tangent to the circle Q. If the measure of PMQ is 212, PMQ is this arc right here. So if that is 212, what is the measure of PQR? PQR is this angle right here. So if we've got that that's 212, we know that the angle in here must be 106. And if that's 106, then we know that PQR is going to be supplementary. So the measure of angle PQR is going to be 74.